gonna do a water change on my farm tank. This is the crypts in it, the three different kinds of crypts. And I've got some guppy grass floating around in there and uh, one, one type or another of a variegated philodendron. Because it's down low here, I use a little bitty submersible pump. And it just goes straight into this five gallon bucket. And it's slow, but it works. And it might be on the slow setting right now, which is, anyway. So, I'm not sure why this tank gets so cloudy lately. It's, it used to be just crystal clear. I took some uh, some pots of crypts out and planted them in other tanks. And so maybe maybe it's just the, the cloudiness from uh, um, the sand that's still floating around in the water. So I'm going to do a water change, and I'll probably do like 75%. And there's uh, wild type uh, mollies in here that I got from Mexicali Fish Keeper. They came out of the Colorado River. And there's some uh, Neocaridina, ne Neocaridina shrimps. Uh, there's kind of a mix of those. Um, and then there are three false Julie quarries. Actually, I think there are four false Julie quarries. And the only way I could figure they got here, I used to have some uh, hornwort in this tank. And the tank that I've got false chili quarries in, they've laid eggs in the hornwort. So I evidently transferred some of the hornwort out of that tank into this tank once upon a time and uh, brought some eggs with it. And what a surprise that was when I first saw those, or the, that one little quarry. And then it was two, and then it was three, and the other day I saw four. So it's, it's kind of nice. It's been a big surprise. Uh, I think they call it serendipity, a happy accident. Anyway, that's that tank. And then this tank, I've got some blue dream shrimp in, and there's one little placostomus. There should have been three. One died. I knew that, so I took it back and got my money back for that one. And there's supposed to be one more, and I have no idea where it is. So if it died, the shrimp cleaned it up really quick. Not a clue. Um, and it's dark because it's got a lot of tannins in here. I had Indian almond leaf and some... Uh, um, the little alder cones and I also and now I gotta stop this thing before it overflows here pay attention um, and I should probably pull the pump out because that's still higher there we go don't forget how siphons work right high area to low area it's still make a mess even with a, a plug pulled um, and I've got this uh, I think it's hydrophilic japonica floating came from another tank it's full of green hair algae that really tough filamentous algae I hate that but anyway I also have some growing down here that's clean and there's java ferns tucked in here and that looks like a uh, um, Amazon sword and I think there's a couple of bulbitis in here glued to rocks a bunch of java fern glued to rocks and at the very back there when I got all those crypts uh, there were some broken pieces of uh, rhizomes, so I just stuck them in the in the substrate all the way in the back of the tank here, and they're sprouting. So instead of just throwing them away, they're sprouting. And I got a bunch of bladder snails in here. I've been playing find the bladder snails and weed them out here. So I got to, I don't know, probably pulled a hundred out, and there's more. And I keep finding their little egg masses. And I also got some red root floater in that tank. And in this tank, I've got some, I got them from Mexicali Fish Keeper. You call them mutt guppies. Uh, they're really pretty. So whatever they are, they're just a variety guppy. And they spawned. Uh, there was a big female in here up until a few days ago and, and no idea what happened to her. I came out here and she was floating on top of this mat of that Hygrophila japonica also. Um, and she was floating on top of it dead and I don't know what killed her. And she was plump. So I don't know if, you know, like her birth canal got plugged or what, but anyway. And then there's a couple java ferns floating in here and another uh, uh, couple of uh, uh, Amazon swords. A little bitty one in, in the pot there in the little Finding Nemo pot I got at Disneyland. And uh, the other one next to it. Those, these Amazon swords uh, came from one of the flower spikes of another Amazon sword that I, oh, you know what? I just saw the second Placostomus here. So they are both still alive in that tank. They are hiding right into there. You can see the, all that, that stuff moving. All that stuff is the skeleton, skeletonized leaf of an Indian almond leaf. The shrimp did that. Uh, 
So anyway, and there's a lot of mulm in there, and there's I got uh, orange, uh, orange uh, neocaridina in this tank, and I think two survived. There's one way back there, and uh, I just ordered some more. Um, you know, they should be here on Friday. Um, so anyway, the guppies just they've had a somebody had a big spawn so there's there's a bunch in there there's probably a dozen or more uh, guppy fry in there and that's cool and then in the back that's a, a terracotta pot full of uh, a crypt I think they're windy I, I I don't know I'd have to go back and look at the um, uh, you know look for my invoice bottom vendor from Amazon uh, I think I put a little gravel at the bottom of the pot just to keep the sand from coming because it's a regular garden terracotta pot, so it's got a drainage hole in there, like you need drainage in an aquarium. Um, and so I put probably put some gravel or a piece of rock at the bottom, and then just filled it with sand and, and uh, uh, a little bit of uh, aqua soil mixed in there, and uh, I'd stick a API root tab in there once in a while, and they're doing really well. So eventually they'll come out. It's been kind of a farm pot. And then this last tank, pardon the noise, because I'm dragging them in and my finger across the screen. This was a chunk of manzanita that I uh, planted a bunch of Busa philandra on. Uh, I found the Busa philandra where they sell the bettas at a PetSmart. They were in a cup of water on a little metal screen. A really cool, really. Well, there's a break here because my thumb hit the hit the stop button. Yeah, but those blue flanders, I thought it was a really nice deal. Um, but anyway, I, I super glued them down to uh, this chunk of manzanita. And I, I had done a short video on this chunk of manzanita. It had termites in it. I bought it from a local fish shop. And so what I did was I stuck it in the freezer for a couple weeks and that should have killed the termites. And I did a little short on that, how to, you know, how to do that. Um, but anyway, I had a male and female albino crebensis she's down there in the corner he died a couple weeks ago i have no idea what happened i know i've had this nasty outbreak of algae but that shouldn't have killed them uh yeah the tank stays about 74. uh they spawned once in another 40 breeder behind me uh that they came out of and i put them in this tank and never did spawn again they kind of had what looked like a nest at the back of the tank uh there's a a nice crypt back there a bronze crypt wendy eye and uh, another Amazon sword that came off of one of those spikes of uh, the flower spikes off a big Amazon sword in the tank behind me. And Lobelia cardinalis, it's never really done well. It was a free plant that came with a bunch of uh, a bunch of Anubias that I bought from uh, Aquarium Plant Labs up in the north, northern uh, Washington State, Pacific Northwest. And then this tank just exploded with green algae and the cyanobacteria. I am trying that Green Water Labs Algae Control, and I've dosed this twice. It looks like maybe the algae's slowing down. I'm not sure. Uh, it looks like it might be. I had a, a big Anubius. Uh, you can see the bare spot on that terracotta cylinder there. That's where an Anubius was, but it was just absolutely black with algae. Uh, it's still alive. It's got some new growth coming out. I, it just, I pulled it out of there and threw it in another tank. Um, there's some auto sinkless in here. I think you might be able to see one all the way in the back, uh, somewhere right around here, on top, uh, somewhere, somewhere back on this, that chunk of wood. Uh, and then I think there's another one all the way in the back on top of that little sponge filter. Um, but I don't know if that uh, that green algae, whatever it's called. Uh, Green Water Labs Algae Control. I don't know if it's any good or not. I think uh, Skull Aquatics did a uh, did a review on it. I don't think it got very good reviews from them. And you know they were doing everything but calling it snake oil, as I recall. We'll see. I've only had it for a couple weeks. I've only dosed this tank twice. So and I bought two bottles. Uh, so we we will see if that uh, if that works or not. There might even be a couple little orange uh, neocaridinas in this tank. I had a when I first got these orange neocaridinas in this tank, uh, all of a sudden a bunch of them kind of failed. So I put them in the tank with the blue dreams and they did just fine. 
And once this tank, I got it sorted out, I put them back in, uh, the orange ones back in this tank. And then I was finding little orange babies in this tank. Now, I don't know if they actually uh, mated with the Blue Dreams or if it was a buried uh, orange one. And so anyway, I pulled them out and not, not sure what they were. I, I put them in this tank down here instead of putting them back with, uh, with the orange. I didn't want to like corrupt the line if I could help it. So I'm getting more orange anyway. And I think there's just two adults left. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully they'll, uh, it took me two tries to get uh, the red cherries in the house. And now I got red cherry shrimp everywhere. Uh, they breed like cockroaches. And, and these blue dreams just, I lost, I, I think there was 12 or 13 in the batch when I bought them. They're 10 plus, however they do it. And uh, uh, I think 10 plus two is what they, and, and so about, I don't know, probably lost five or six. But there's little ones all over the place, so you know that they're working out really well. So anyway, these are the 20 gallon uh, Aquions that I got from Petco. God, I don't know, probably six months ago now. Ordered them online, uh, got the 50% discount, and even got an extra discount to have uh, have them delivered. And the deliveries, uh, I got some a couple of these 29s also. Uh, and the deliveries were through DoorDash. So they came in two separate cars, two separate delivery guys. Um, and there was a $10 delivery discount. I thought, well, geez, no kidding. So, and I just saw LRB uh, Aquatics or LRB, whatever, uh, Lucas. He, he just was showing a bunch of uh, Petco. Uh, I, I hope I said Petco the first time. Petco. Uh, Aquarium said he just bought again at that 50% discount. It's a hell of a deal. Uh, I bought these little fives also. You do have to be careful. That little five there, uh, it's just low in water and it's got, I think there's two shrimp in there. I keep pulling shrimp out of a filter in the house. So I, I thought I'm gonna just start throwing them here. Last time I got two out. Time before I must've got 30 and I put them in another tank. Um, but there's a nice scratch on the glass on this one. So you do have to inspect them. They are inexpensive tanks. They are not the low iron tanks. Uh, but you know, they're not bad. They don't always do the smartest things, you know, where they put the plastic seam on the top or the plastic trim on the top. You can see, you know, there's, there's a seam there on this one. And this one's in the middle instead of putting them on the ends. So I don't know, they, they probably don't have, you know, these people have one job. So <laughs> anyway, uh, all in good fun, right? So anyway, and that's another little five gallon Aquion right there with uh, little platies in it. But anyway, it was all about the 20s. Um, it's a good size tank. It's a great size, uh, I think, personally, I think it's a great size breeder tank. Um, obviously not for really big fish, but for nanos and, you know, maybe shrimp. Um, and, and, you know, it's definitely worth a shot. They got the lip, they don't come with lids. Uh, if you want lids, I've seen other videos on, on doing a, a, the acrylic uh, acrylic lids. I think uh, Simply Betta uh, did one on, you did a video on making the lids and I think she got it from uh, uh, somebody else and I think she uh, talks about who she got it from. So you can go search that out on YouTube and like that. So anyway, I just thought I'd share this with you. Um, and maybe, maybe somebody can chime in with uh, you know, the algae control stuff here. That'd be great. And also, uh, you know, I just love to hear your, uh, you know, your questions, your comments, or your smart ass remarks, because we're all friends here. <laughs> this, is, this is one of the best things I ever got back into. I used to keep fish when I was a kid, got out of it, and just got back into it a year ago, almost a year ago to the day. Got my first aquarium and got, I don't know, 40 years. Uh, and it's a, it's a 16 gallon water box. It's it's on the kitchen counter uh, opposite the faucet, opposite the kitchen faucet. Um, and, and it's a great tank. It's got a couple big chunks of Sirius stone in it and a bunch of neon tetras and a couple little clown plecos and uh, half a dozen albino quarries and cherry shrimp coming out the wazoo. That was the first batch um, that, that I had bought. Same vendor as th this orange and the blue, blue dream. It's a vendor from Amazon, and they're in Fullerton, California, which was really close to where I used to live. So now we're in Palm Desert. Things are different. Uh, so anyway, once again, 
questions, comments, smart-ass remarks, chime in. This is Ron, Garage Aquatics 2023. Y'all take care.